Out on the islands, things seem the same as a hundred years ago. You're in nature. You're you're surrounded by it, and the outside world is uh, it's 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 just not there. It's just you seem on your own. Today, to go to those islands, it could feel like a time war. You arrive somewhere where suddenly the outside world is is not important. You're surrounded by the weather, cold sea, and I don't know to say that you feel stuck it could be an exaggeration, but the sensation is strong. It's it's not for everybody. After three long days of travel, we arrived in the islands. The night we rolled in, we met up with Sean Moffat, pretty much the only surfer in the area. He reached out on a surfing message board almost a decade ago, inviting us to explore the region with him. With it being so hard to access spots in the region, he'd only surfed a couple spots nearby. He showed us what he knew, but it wasn't much outside of a couple beach breaks in town, so there was a huge opportunity to surf waves that potentially had never been surfed before. As we took a look at the forecast, we could see that there was a good patch of wind and swell coming for later in the week. Sean said he could connect us with his friend Chris Poole, a farmer who owned an outer island. So for the time being, we decided to check the nearby coast and see what was on offer. He said we need to ask for permission whenever we're crossing farmers' properties and to watch out for landmines that blanket the beaches from a previous war. around the corner we realized it was only about one foot but the fact that there was clean waves and penguins on the beach made it more about the experience and less about surfing perfect waves. that first day be sunny and nice with a couple peaks rolling through it really helped wash off that jet lag and get the spirit of adventure fired up. We called up Sean's friend Chris Poole, the farmer who owned an outer island. He said he'd be happy to host us in exchange for a barrel of fuel and a couple slabs of Budweiser. Fuel for the boat and fuel for the men. go 
to one of these islands is it's an experience. There's very little distraction. You're there with your thoughts. Everything seems magnified in, the, in your head and how you relate to the outside world. You're living on such a place. You're enthusiastic for a visitor. You have to be aware of the climate, how things change quickly. You can go out the door and not have the right clothing, not be in the right frame of mind. And it doesn't seem that extreme until you actually get out there. The actual elements, uh, the inhospitable nature of the landscape and the wind, rain, that sort of thing, you know, you will come unstuck. You, you can't take it lightly in such a place. Getting around the island, you need a four by four. There's not set roads, there's tracks that go out from the back of the buildings and seem to wind off into nowhere.
nature of the islands is the challenge outside, the elements, the isolation. So you do maintain a responsibility towards each other in such a place. Uh, differences, they kind of get left behind because everybody needs a favour, nobody can exist on their own. You do need your fellow man here, but you can't avoid that. You can't curl up and, and be isolated. As they say, no man is an island. really afford to close down completely. You need your, your neighbour, you really do. There is an excitement when you're out there, you know, outside of the town and surrounded by nature. It's like a lot of differences don't matter. You know, people are very self-sufficient. They're excited to fix something. They're excited to meet, to meet a stranger. They're, they're excited to help and it's, and it's genuine. off the island. The distance seems closer, everything's brighter. Everybody's smiling, even the landscape is smiling. 
the wildlife, it's all smiling and maybe there's no place better to be.